How's it going? I'm Jared Gillis. Welcome to another All About RVs. Today, we're going to be taking a, a portable solar power station and comparing it to an inverter generator that a lot of RVers have been using for over the years. Because today, we're going to be looking at the Delta II Max, and it's claiming that it can replace your generator for your RV. So let's put them side by side, be able to compare them, run them through a bunch of tests, and see who comes out on top in which areas. So that's what we're going to be looking at today, seeing these two things battle it out. So let's get right to it, comparing both of these together. So at the offset, it looks like the, the Champion might actually have the upper hand, just kind of looking at the, the names. This is the Champion 2500. The advantages that we're gonna have there is it's dual fuel, so propane and gasoline, and it's a 2500 watt generator. This here is the Delta II Max, and one of the benefits is it's one of the lightest 2400 watt output with lithium battery packed into this type of a, a solar power power station. So at the get-go, it might look like the Champion is outclassing the Delta II Max, but this is actually the, the surge rating on it. It's going to be lower, and this is what it is for continuous. It actually surges higher than that. But let's get into the details and how they measure up and stack up to each other. So the Champion with oil in it weighs in at exactly 40 pounds. The Delta II Max comes in at 51.4 pounds. You can add a couple of extra batteries onto this. We do have one to be able to test it with this unit. So the base unit with the extra battery battery comes weighing in at 92.4 pounds. The Champion is 17 and a half inches tall, it's 10 and a half inches wide, and it's 17 and a half inches deep. The EcoFlow is 12 inches tall, nine and three quarter inches wide, 19 and a quarter inches deep, and with the extra battery stacked on top, it's 23 inches tall stacked. So that'll give you an idea of what these are like. So the Champion is gonna be lighter than any configuration of the Delta II Max. The Delta II Max is taller once we add the extra battery, but by itself, it is smaller in dimensions than the Champion. Now, before we get into what they run, how they do, the voltage drop on a large load, can they run an AC, we're gonna get to that, but I also wanted to test the power on these. So hooking these both up to an oscilloscope, they both have very clean power coming out of them, so they're good for ACs, sensitive electronics, all that is good. And as far as what they're claiming, the Champion, like I said, is a 2,500 watt generator. Again, that's the peak. So the running watts on gasoline, it's 1,850 watts. And on propane, it's 1,665 watts. It definitely is less on propane than it is on gasoline, but we prefer using it almost exclusively on propane, except for, for videos like this, because we don't like transporting gasoline. So it's, propane is just really clean to be able to use with this generator, and we don't have gasoline on hand. Now, for the EcoFlow, it's 2400 watts out continuous and it's 4800 watts of a surge. Now this does have X boost so you can try and run larger items and you're going to suffer on the voltage. We're not going to be covering that today because we don't want that for our AC inside of the RV. So we're going to stick with the numbers that we have here, the 2400 watts out continuous. As far as the capacity on the Delta II Max, it's 2,048 watt hours, and you double that with the extra battery. So if you just have the, the base unit, that's the equivalent of having like a one and a half hundred amp hour batteries. And you have that, it's like having three 100 amp hour batteries. That just kind of puts it in RVers terms. Now, I wanted to see how they handled a large load. So I hit them with around 1,500 watts, and I wanted to see what that voltage drop was like and how quickly it recovered. So on the Champion, just standard, not on eco mode, it dropped down to around 115 volts, and it took less than two seconds for it to recover. So 1.71 seconds and 1.86 seconds the second time that I tested it. Then I dropped the Champion over into eco mode. It brings that down so you're not burning as much fuel. It's a little bit more efficient, but it might have a harder time if a, a large load hits it. So with that, it went down to 81.4 volts. It took 1.83 seconds and 2.17 seconds to be able to recover from that large load. On the Delta II Max, I did that same test and I couldn't find any voltage drop. So that's a, a good indication that this is gonna have no problem starting the AC that is out there because those ACs usually take a lot of power in the beginning and that voltage drop was really, really bogs down generators, makes them hard to start. So this may not be able to start some ACs in eco mode. Having those devices on there like a microwave easy start makes it easier for a, a generator to be able to start an AC in the summertime. So the next test that we did is I 
I wanted to see how well these run the AC and the RV, and I wanted to see how much fuel or battery it consumed in one hour. So we started off with the Champion, fired that up, and we ran it for an hour, and it used 2.2 pounds of propane. So it ran the AC on propane. 2.2 pounds comes out to 0.53 gallons of propane, because that's usually how you buy it. So just over a half gallon of propane. So if we ran the full 30 pound bottle of propane, we could run this for just over 13 and a half hours, 13.6 hours. And that was pretty close to maxing this out on propane the entire time. So remember this was 1,665 watts that it can do. And the load that we gave it was 1,630. So it was almost maxed out the entire hour. So I wanted to do the Delta II Max kind of on two different tests. I wanted to use it with just the base unit connected to solar, because that's one of the advantages with it. This was obviously connected to a very large propane tank. So we're gonna have a solar panel connected to it for the same test. So we're gonna use just the base unit, not the extra battery, and it ran for an hour. And that left us with 32% battery left. The interesting thing that we saw while it was running, I saw at times we have two sets of 400 watts plugged into this in the back. And we did see over 800 watts of charging going into this at times. It was partially cloudy. So at times we definitely didn't have the 800 watts coming in and it would come down to 80 watts. So kind of a typical day of RVing out there. You have some clouds, some sunshine. And so that's what it averaged out to. We ended up with 32% battery left in just the base unit. So I also wanted to test the Champion, how long it could go on gasoline. And so I filled that tank up half Halfway, and that ran for one hour and 56 minutes. And that was a, a pretty healthy load. It was 1,575 watts that it was drawing continuously out of there. So that means that if we had a full tank of fuel in there, it could run for three hours and 50 minutes. So I wanted to test the Delta II Max from 100% all the way down to zero, see how efficient it was, and just running an AC nonstop. So how long could it run a 13,500 BTU AC? And it ended up stopping at three hours and 13 minutes. The stated capacity on these two is 4,096 watt hours. I had a meter set up on the, the back end of it to see how efficient it was. And the, the meter said that it drew out of here 3,750 watt hours. So that means it was 346 watt hours kind of lost in the conversion and the, the operating of the inverter. So that's what you can expect running this from 100% all the way down to zero. Again, that was with the base and this single extra battery. Now, one test that I did that it didn't have the outcome that I was expecting was starting an AC without a, a microwear easy start or a soft start device on the unit. So I wanted to see how these did. So we're actually gonna have to come back to this to take a look at this AC unit because I know it's a 13,500 AC unit, but it actually only had like 32, 33 amps at startup. And that device I was using usually does a pretty good job of capturing pretty close to what the, the startup amps are required for an AC unit. So. Both of these actually were able to handle it. And I even tested this one in eco mode. Okay, now if it does this one on eco mode, I am going to be flabbergasted. It sounded like the compressor went. Yeah, compressor is running. That's impressive, that's impressive. Now let's talk about some of these differences because when you look at sound, there's a huge difference between the two of these. So testing the Champion on full load, I was getting 58 dB at 50 feet. At 50 feet with no load, I was getting 50 dB. And on eco mode at 50 feet, I was getting 46 dB. And then on the Delta II Max, I couldn't get the, the sound reading that would actually be accurate because I was picking up so much of the AC that was on top that uh, it really couldn't get the difference. I had to put the microphone up to it. I really couldn't get a good reading for just how quiet this is. It's obviously not a running engine. You do get some fan noise. So when you have it inside, there will be some fan noise, but as far as the noise level outside and using it in like a national park or something like that, trying to meet that regulation and not bother other people around you, this is gonna be the clear winner in the, the sound category. If we're looking at maintenance, you're supposed to change the oil on this between 50 and 100 hours, depending on if it's heavy use when you're running it or if it's light use. This, there's no oil to change. Sure, you need to keep those charged up, but you can charge up those batteries and let them sit for months and it's not going to be a problem. You can get it back out, plug it back in, charge it up and use it. No real maintenance on these. It has a battery management system inside of it, a BMS, to take care of those batteries so you, you don't really have any maintenance 
maintenance. So the longevity and the life of these also, it's the, you know, 3000 cycles. So you could use it every day cycling it for 10 years and you still have 80% capacity inside of this after 10 years. That's, that's kind of the industry standard that we're seeing nowadays. As far as refueling, drastic difference between the two of these. Uh, the Champion, we have gasoline or propane. That 30 pound bottle is gonna last you a really long time. Going into town to get propane, going into town to get gasoline, as long as those things are open, it's gonna be available. Now we have seen scenarios like in Texas where that freezing cold came down and people couldn't get propane and gasoline and so th those weren't available. But on a normal circumstance, like right now, we could go and within an hour, go and refuel for this. On this, you have multiple ways to be able to bring in that power source. Obviously, plugging it into the wall, you wouldn't have that out there boondocking, although it's very efficient and fast at doing that. You can have solar. You can have a 1,000 watts of solar into this. You can have those two inputs in the back. Like I said, we did 400 watts on each of those inputs. It's not always possible to try and get exactly 1,000 watts. I thought doing 800 was a pretty good test on this unit. We were seeing over 800 watts because of the MPPT charge controller that's in there, it makes it efficient, makes efficient use of the panels that you do have out. That being said, if it's cloudy, you're not really gonna be using those panels hardly at all. Like we saw when it was cloudy, we were pulling in 80 and I thought that was doing pretty good. You can charge this in your vehicle. You're usually gonna get about 100 watts. So it's gonna be a very slow, long process in order to get that. So when you're out there, you have to plug this into a generator hope for sun and use those panels, put them out, which is effective when you do that, or plug it into your car, which is gonna be a slow, tedious process of bringing this back up and refueling it. But I do have to say a thousand watts capable inside of here is quite impressive and is substantial. So when you have that sun and you have those panels, it is gonna charge it quickly. I mean, if you're trying to run your AC at the same time that you're charging it, which is possible with solar and using the output on the inverter, uh, you're not gonna quite make up the, the same amount of what's gonna be coming from the AC, but it's definitely going to extend your run time for that given period. As your AC kicks off, you will start to, to catch up and gain that, that ground back that you lost while the AC was running. So it all depends on your point of use and how you're going to use this. Another difference is what do you do when it rains? When it rains, you can actually bring this inside. I usually work this inside the, the bay and just plug into it there. It just keeps it from getting as dirty. And if it does rain, it's already out of the way. This, you can't bring inside of your RV when you're burning propane and gasoline. For obvious reasons, you can't bring it in. And you shouldn't put it underneath the RV because those, those fumes can come inside the RV and that could be a dangerous situation. So in the rain, the Delta II Max is the, the definite winner there. We already talked about sound, but when it comes to quiet hours at night, being able to bring that in and use it or even just keep it outside and use it, nobody's gonna know that you're running this and getting power off of it compared to a generator. When you hit those quiet hours, the generator needs to turn off when this can actually keep going. So as long as you banked that power during the day through solar, you can continue using that into the night and not bother anybody. I'm gonna put links down in the description to both of these. Right now, the Delta II Max just launched. So they're gonna have promotions and discounts on that going on right now. Uh, and there is a discount if you click the link down into the description, but that brings us to price. And that's one of the huge differences that we're gonna see between the generator and this new unit. So the generator comes in at $489 that you can pick up right now. And the Delta II Max is $1,900. The extra battery is $1,400, so it brings this package up to $3,300. Now, if you were to compare that to a Honda, because I've mentioned the Honda in this video also, an amazing generator that is out there, the Honda generator runs for $1,200. It's one of the reasons that we ended up going with the Champion, the dual fuel, being able to run it on propane. It worked really well for us, but that's where everything lines up as far as price. One thing I completely forgot to mention is you compare this with other generators or they now make a power station too that you can link this to. So if you needed more output or a larger generator, you can get still another smaller generator, link them together and have a higher output. So on the EcoFlow system, if you wanted to link them together, you're gonna increase the capacity, but not necessarily the, the output. If you wanted a higher output, you had to go with one of the higher units like a, a Delta Pro or something like that. So that, that is a difference. 
So I think that's gonna do it for our comparison. I try to be as fair and as honest as I possibly can looking at the Champion and the Delta II Max, seeing where each one of those might have a, a pro and a con. Uh, hopefully it's gonna help you make a decision if you're interested in going with something like this to replace your generator. The Delta II Max might fit in that scenario or you might want to have a dual fuel generator that helps you recharge the batteries and uh, run a few things around the RV to go with an inverter setup on your RV. So I think that's gonna do it for today. I hope you guys like the video of seeing these two units go head to head. If you did like it, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos about RVing and more comparisons coming up, hit that subscribe button. And if we don't see you on the road, hopefully we will see you next video.